Hi there, fifth wheel owners. Today in your 2017 StarCraft Solstice, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Stromberg Carlson's replacement landing gear. And we're going to be doing both sides, the leading as well as the following. You do want to keep in mind that these are separate components. They are purchased separately, but we do offer a kit here at eTrailer.com with everything that you'll need to do both sides as well as the rest of the hardware. And this is what our replacement landing gear looks like when it's installed. It does include the landing gear tube that you see here as well as the extendable shaft out of it and the drop leg. What you don't get is the quick release here. We do have these available here at eTrailer. We just reuse the customer's old one. And in most cases, your old hardware is gonna be able to swap over. So if it didn't get damaged, then you can just go ahead and reuse it. The foot also does not come included, but you will receive a new pin. This pin can either be used to attach a foot or if you don't have a quick link, you can use this pin to operate your drop leg. You just have to pull the pin out, the leg will drop down, and then you have to manually reinsert the included pin. To help save yourself a significant amount of money, if you have any damage to your legs, let's say maybe you accidentally left them down and hooking up your fifth wheel and you went to take off and you damaged the leg, or the gears are wear, worn out, or anything else, rather than replacing the entire assembly, you can replace just the damaged component. That's gonna be a lot cheaper and it's also gonna be a lot easier since you're not having to take everything out, just the part that you need. Your replacement jack here is just this tube, so you will have to reuse some of your old components, but this is the most likely the component that's going to get damaged if you do accidentally leave your legs down and take off or something like that, or, you, or you're on some uneven terrain that comes loose and it starts to move. Usually the foot and the jack is where, what takes the damage. The parts you are gonna to need to reuse is the shaft that goes across that connects your following to your lead side. This is our lead side over here. You'll also need to reuse your motor and the transmission for the motor to attach to it. What you do get with your replacement jack though is new hardware to attach to your shaft as well as to the motor for your leading jack. And on your following jack on the other side, you'll get new hardware to attach to the shaft. And speaking of getting everything attached, why don't you follow along with me and we'll get this installed in the shop. These really aren't too bad. On our solstice here, it is a little bit more of a challenge due to the tight restraints of where it's located. We're gonna be replacing both the leading and following landing gear on this. Our customers has chattering and makes some noise and he just wants it to be a nice smooth operation that doesn't make any noise. In order to remove these legs, we are gonna have to have the trailer supported by the frame. So you can use your jack stands and a jack to do so. What I, if your jacks are working, you can use those to lift it up, place your jack stands under it and then lower it back down. That's how I got mine on here. Um, but if you've got a floor jack or something like that, you could also use that to lift it up. But it does need to be supported because we're gonna have to pull this whole leg out. Now, if you don't have a floor jack, you could also hook this up to your truck and just be connected to your fifth wheel. Our leading leg is gonna be over here on the driver's side, and our following one is over here on the passenger side. There's a crossbar in there that connects the two together. We're gonna to take that out first. The passenger side landing gear here, there's a crossbar that goes onto the shaft that's here at the top. A single bolt passes through that connects the two together. We're gonna to be using a 3 16 Allen socket to remove the bolt. And this is the same hardware over here on the driver's side as the passenger side, so just take that bolt out. We can then collapse the shaft, slide it off each end, and we'll just set it here in our compartment. We can go ahead and start taking our leg loose now, because it'll be a little bit easier since we've got plenty of length here on our wiring to get this loose, and we can take the motor off afterwards. Depending on your situation, if you don't have as much cable length and stuff, you may want to take the motor off first. But we're going to be getting this leg moved to a, a more convenient position. There's a bolt located here, and there's also one further down. It's a little hard to see on this one, but it is down in this cavity here. And depending on the layout for the particular options you have, it might not be as crowded as it is on this customer's layout. But we're gonna remove both of these bolts here on the upper and lower one. They're a carriage bolt, so you don't need a wrench on the other side. And we're just gonna use our 9 socket to remove the nut. Now that we got both of those removed, I like to thread it on just a turn or two because there's a couple more parts we gotta take out and we don't want this moving around on us. So it can't come out of there as long as this bolt's still in there. So that's why I just put a turn on there. Down here at the bottom, this is gonna be too large to pass through our hole. So we're gonna come down here on the foot we're gonna take our foot off. 
And then next we're going to be removing this assembly here. The two bolts that hold this section on, we're gonna remove with a 10 millimeter socket. Now when you pull this out of here, the leg is going to want to extend. So just make sure you're supporting that. And what we can actually use is the pin from when we removed our foot. We can use this to secure it. So we're just gonna slide that on through and that'll hold that together for us. Before we take our jack out of there, you may have a tube in your way here that goes to the vent for your battery. So we're just gonna get, take the screws out and just move this tube out of the way. If you don't have this here, don't worry about it. Just if you see any components that's kind of in, gonna interfere with you, they're not light, the landing gears. So if you can make things a little bit easier on yourself now, it'll be worth it in later steps. We are ready to now get our assembly out of the way so we can take out these bolts. The lower bolts, depending on your layout, may be very tight and may not come all the way out. Ours isn't gonna come all the way out, but it'll come out enough for us to maneuver it around. So now that that's loose, we can go ahead and just lift it up. It is very heavy. So you just wanna be careful. We're gonna kinda just tip it and tilt it as we lift up. So just keep working it up until you get it out. If that lower bolt comes out on yours, then the thing will fall right out of there. But if the lower bolt's stuck like ours, you just gotta keep working it back and forth until you get it, eventually get it out of there. So now that we've got it in a position where we can more easily work on it here. The collar here will need to take off of the shaft. There's a single screw that holds it on. And we still got it wired up. So what we can do is we can actually just kind of bump the motor a little bit until it's facing in a direction where we can easily get it. It's just a Phillips screw, so we're just gonna unscrew it. Once you've got the screw off of there, the collar does just slide off of there. It's been on there for a while, so it's a little stiff, so you might need to use a screwdriver to help you out a little bit. Once that collar's out of the way, the entire motor assembly with transmission will just slip right off of there. You might have to get a screwdriver behind it to kind of get it started because it's been on there for a while so it does get stuck just like that little bushing did. Same here, we're kind of stuck right here at the end. Once you've got it slid off there, we can then set the motor aside and we'll remove the entire assembly. Now that we've got the driver's side removed, if you're replacing your passenger side as well, we can go ahead and do that one. We're gonna be replacing it. It comes out exactly the same way as the driver's side. There's just no motor, so it's just those two bolts. Take your foot off on the bottom, then it'll slide right out of there. Now we can go ahead and get our new ones in place. We're gonna start back over here on the driver's side again, and we've got our leading leg. So I just went ahead and set it in here, and we're gonna go ahead and get that motor back on it. So we can go ahead and take our motor now. It's this, we have the same shaft on this landing gear as our old one, so our motor is gonna slide right on. You do have to line it up. You can see there's a flat spot just like on the shaft. And once you get it lined up, that guy will just slide right down on there. We can now secure the motor to it. You do get a new collar with your landing gear. The little tab here is gonna face away from the landing gear. That's gonna slide on there. And you can see here that our holes line up. So we're just gonna take the included screw. We're gonna thread it in there and then just tighten it down. We can go ahead and lift it back into position now. We can now reinstall our old bolts. Make sure that you've got these back into position. So those little tabs, if you look here, the bracket that we're clamping around it, the tab here on this backside actually rests on top of this. And it's gonna be just the opposite on the bottom. This tab's gonna be just below your bracket and that ensures it can't go up or down. It holds it in this position. And then when we tighten this bolt down, the side ears here will clamp around it as well. Now it might be a little tight. You may need to tap it with the rubber mallet or what I, what I like to do is you can just pull this pin here at the bottom 
and this shaft will come out and this you can use this as leverage and kind of push on it down here like this to get that all the way in. You'll know you're all the way in. One, you'll be able to insert the bolt. If you're not all the way in, the bolt won't go in. But you'll also know if you look at the little tab here, you can see how it's butted up against the bottom of this bracket, just like the opposite of how we pointed out at the top. And our bolt is able to slide all the way through, which also ensures us that we're all the way in because this bolt is at a certain distance here to where the, the landing gear cannot come out of position. It holds it back, locking that tab in. With everything in place, we can go back and tighten these down. Now that we got our new leg tightened down, we can go ahead and transfer our feet and components back over to it. Once you've got all your old components transferred over to your new landing gear, you can repeat the same process on the other side to get that one installed. You don't have to worry about putting a motor on over there. You can now put our shaft back into position. You do get new hardware to attach the shaft. So we're going to take the bolt that comes with it, put a flat washer on it, and we're going to line that up with the hole in our following leg here, slide it through. On the other side, we're just going to follow that up with another flat washer and then a locking nut. The new hardware will tighten down using an 11 millimeter socket and wrench. You don't need to go crazy with it. We just want to have it tight enough to where it's going to prevent any rattles. It's, it is going to be a little loose on there because the shaft is smaller than the inside here, so we're just trying to take out any play in the bolt. If you had any components you moved out of your way, you want to make sure you put those back on. So we're going to go ahead and reattach the tube that we pulled out. Now that they are fully attached, we can go ahead and test them out. Now that we've ensured that everything's working, I do recommend that you extend them out because then we can use a little bit of white lithium grease on our leg here just to ensure we've got a nice layer of lubrication. That'll just help extend the life of our components and it can also help minimize any kind of noise that you might get. Because on certain days, as the humidity and stuff changes, sometimes you'll get a little squeak out of it. This can help just eliminate that altogether. And that completes our installation of Stromberg Carlson's replacement landing gear on our 2017 StarCraft Solstice.